Great. See difference? Yeah. Yeah. You're a great teacher. I'm a great teacher. Thank you. I'm a good student. You are a good student. Best looking student I've ever had. <laughs> so last time you were out in the shop, we built this, or you built this. I did. This is a cabinet. Well, today we have to go one step further and we are going to build a drawer, mm -hmm. uh, install undermount drawer slides, uh, install the drawer and install a drawer front. And you're also gonna get an opportunity to do some edge banding. You're also gonna get an opportunity to use uh, the router table briefly. Um, and yeah, we're gonna construct a simple box. So uh, we are going to be using Bloom undermount drawer slides for this. They're gonna be 21 inches in depth because it's a 24 inch cabinet. So we wanna maximize the space. And this is a little bit more technical because there are a lot more small little things to, to keep in mind and a lot of measurements. So I don't wanna to try to, I don't wanna overly confuse you with the measurements, but I want you to understand why we're doing what we're doing. Okay. okay? So to start out, edge banding and all that will come. Uh, we need to build the drawer box. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the, the way you construct a drawer box for undermount drawer slides is pretty specific. It comes with four parts for the box, or excuse me, five parts for the box. We have two sides, as you can see here, the long ones. We have a front. In this case, this is gonna be the one that you use the router on. Um, and then we have a back. Now, you'll notice that the back is an inch smaller, okay? The reason for that is because we need to have space in the back, and you'll see this shortly, for the undermount drawer slides. And this is a way to do it. There's another way that you could cut this the same size and cut notches, but that's a lot of extra work. We don't need to do that. And then we have this final part right here. This is the bottom panel for the drawer, okay? Now, with full extension drawer slides, the most important measurement, really, is you need to have your, the bottom of your bottom panel needs to be half inch from the bottom of the drawer. You need to have a half inch space. Because if I do this, mm -hmm. that's gonna go in that groove. That's a half inch. Okay. Okay, we need to have that. And again, this will all make sense once we go start assembling it. Now the way we are going to assemble it is what? Pocket holes. Pocket holes, right? A very quick, easy, down and dirty method to do a cabinet. Now, the only two pieces that we need to put pocket holes on are the front mm -hmm. and the back. These are gonna go into the sides because the drawer box is constructed like this. Mm -hmm. Now, why would we do it like this and not like this? Any ideas? Why you would make sure that the side is on the outside of this board and not the front attaching to the side. I have no idea. Think about a drawer. What way do you pull a drawer? Oh yeah. You pull a drawer like this, mm -hmm. right? So if I was to attach my front to this. You pull on the screw. I'm pulling on the screw constantly, right? So it, now if we're doing it like this, not only are we gonna use a little bit of glue, but we're gonna pocket screw that together. Now I'm always pulling against that the screws, right, basically, mm -hmm. on the uh, side. So it is a much, much more solid, sturdy connection. Now, before we get into using the router table, you'll notice that here I have a roughly a half inch groove. I actually probably did a true half inch groove, which is why it's a little bit mm -hmm. big for this plywood. Um, we need to do that on this piece. Okay. Okay, so I've already got the router table set up. So we'll go over to the router table I'll show you what we're gonna do. I'll push one through, we'll make some adjustments, and then you can do the second one. Okay. Now this is not a standard router table. I've got my big router table over there. It has a much bigger router. You can use much larger bits. Um, this is just a great solution for uh, when you need to do small stuff, right? Or even big stuff for that matter. But here, we are gonna run this board through, okay? If you look at the bit here, mm -hmm. I've already set it to the height. The height that we want is uh, in this scenario, we'll just say, I'm trying to use imperial as much as possible, but I like mm -hmm. to do both. Quarter of an inch, roughly six millimeters. Mm -hmm. um, so we're basically splitting the thickness of the board because mm -hmm. this is 12 millimeter ply, also referred to as half inch, even though it's not a true half inch, but it is a true 12 millimeters. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just splitting it in half. 
right? It makes math for doing the panels and all that stuff super easy when you have uh, those numbers. So it doesn't really matter which side we do it on. They both look pretty much the same. Um, this is set right now with the fence to where we have to make this uh, in two passes because this bit is only three eighths of an inch. Okay. So it's not <laughs> wide enough to do the entire thing at once. Um, so we're gonna have to make the first cut, we'll adjust it, and then you'll make the next cut. And that will give us the full thickness. Okay. So right now we're at where the top of the line is gonna be, so from the next step we'll be moving the fence closer. Okay. All right, you ready? Ready. Okay. Do you need this? No. Because, it's actually a good question. I'm not gonna be using the dust collection, simply because that hooks up to the backside of the fence. So because of the type of cut we're doing, the cut is through here. So the only place that dust can go is forward or down. And I actually don't have the fitting on the dust collector or the router from underneath that will actually collect the dust. So you could do it, but um, if this was against the bit, this would be great and we would use the dust collection. got our first groove. Mm -hmm. So now we just need to come a little bit closer to creep up to that size. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some setup blocks. Now we need to move this so we're going to get the bottom of the groove to where it's half inch from the bottom. And the easiest way to do that from this point is just take one of these setup blocks that is a half inch, right? And we're just going to move the fence forward just a little bit. Now, because this is a round bit, it wouldn't even matter if it was like this. Okay. Right? Because it, it, it's like a drill press. As long as it is at the point of cut, it is where it needs to be. It could be at this angle, it could be this angle. It's gonna make the same cut no matter what. Now we are half inch away. What we will do next is you're gonna run the board through with the groove close mm -hmm. to the fence. And these rollers, what these offer is not only will they put downward pressure on it as it's going through so it doesn't, you get a consistent depth all the way across. But if you look here, you see how the wheels are angled inward? Yes. So they actually help drive that into uh, the fence. These are really, really nice to have. It makes the router table much safer. So we'll go ahead and just get started underneath that. I'll go ahead and turn this on. Once it's on, you'll just push it all the way through. Now, one thing I want to point out, when you're pushing it through, when you get, let's pull this out, when you get out here, mm -hmm. just push from over on this side, because you see where this is coming out, mm -hmm. you don't want to do this. Okay. Does that make sense? Keep your finger away from there, okay? Got it. When it gets to the end. All right, you ready? Ready. First time using a router table. Cool, all right, so we'll go uh, just test fit real quick. It should be good since I cut the other ones yesterday. And we'll move on to the next step. Okay. All right, so this should be a good fit. It's gonna be a little bit loose mm -hmm. uh, because that's just how I had it set up yesterday, so today it is. And that, that's a little bit more loose than I typically would like, but the great thing is, is that once we get all this together, it's gonna sit on top of those intermount drawer slides. It's gonna make it irrelevant, so doesn't really matter. And there's ways that you can go about fixing that. You can put little wedges. They make these little uh, rubber balls that you can put in there. But anyway, it's a lot of, a lot of information. So we need to put some pocket holes on this. Mm -hmm. Which side do we put it on? This side or this side? This side? This side, right? Because this is going to be the outside. This is the inside, obviously, because it has the groove. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we're going to do is we'll do three. You mind grabbing the uh, dust collection hose real mm -hmm. quick? So I will do the three uh, on this side real quick, mm -hmm. only because I want to give you a nice visual of, of kind of how we're going to do the spacing, because there is something that you need to be aware of, and that is this, mm -hmm. right? We can't do a pocket hole on that because then that screw is going to go into that groove. So we want to focus on this small area here. Mm -hmm. Let's just do two because we're going to do the exact same thing on this one. Mm -hmm. why, why reinvent the wheel, okay? So we're going to do two. 
and we just want to make sure that we're, you know, relatively centered on the location from the groove to here, which this probably needs to move over just a little bit, and then we're good. Now, this is half inch material, 12 millimeter. Yesterday, when we uh, built the cabinet, we were using this and we had mm -hmm. this set to three quarters. Well, now we need to change it to half inch because if we left it on three quarters, it would go through the material. Mm -hmm. This adjusts automatically for the thickness, but this does not. Okay. Okay. So. And there we go. It's, it's almost perfectly spaced, mm -hmm. right? And that is more than enough strength along with the glue uh, to help hold this. So we'll get this set right here for you. And you'll do those two, and then you'll do uh, two on both ends on this. Okay. All done? Perfect. Okay, now the only thing we have left to do is assemble this box. And then we have some hardware that we need to put on it for the undermount drawer slides. And then we'll install those slides, the fun stuff. All right, this is pretty simple to do at this point, okay? So this right here is my front. This panel is going to fit into that, right? And then these two sides are gonna attach like this. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the front to the two sides. And then we're going to slide this panel in. And I, I just briefly want to kind of talk about how I got the measurement for this. Mm -hmm. So we know we went a quarter of an inch into the panel on one side, a quarter of an inch into the panel on the other side. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this right here, and something we didn't talk about the measurements, we know we built that for five inches the other day. Mm -hmm. So the drawer box that we're making is a four inch drawer box. We're just subtracting an inch. And that's pretty standard among uh, upper kitchen or kitchen cabinet upper drawers. What we need to do is we need to take this measurement and we need to add a half inch, right? Quarter inch on each side. Mm -hmm. That's how we get that measurement. This measurement. Correct. The mm -hmm. width of the bottom, right? Because this is going to go in the groove, that's going to go in the groove, mm -hmm. right? The length of it in this type of construction is going to be the total length of this mm -hmm. minus a quarter mm -hmm. of an inch or six millimeters because the back will actually attached directly to the top of it. Okay. The reason why we're subtracting that and nothing else is because we need to make up that distance. So we're mm -hmm. only subtracting the groove depth. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. This part is very easy. What I like to do, we're gonna have to move this here. I like to take my pieces. We're gonna set them like this, right? So they're roughly in the space they need to go. Mm -hmm. Do me a favor, grab some of the tight bond quick and thick glue. We'll put a little bit of glue on there. All right, we don't need a lot of glue. We're just gonna use just enough to get a good little bond there. Like that. Put a little bit of glue on this side. I'll let you do the back when we do it. And then now, we're gonna get this lined up as close as possible, right? Which is pretty easy at this point. We haven't clamped anything down yet. Okay, we wanna make sure it's nice and flush in the front. Go mm -hmm. ahead and grab that red clamp. The old par this is a parallel clamp. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite type of clamp. What's, what's another type? Uh, F-style clamps, pipe clamps, um, lots of different options. So what I'm doing, remember in, uh, when we were building the cabinet, I was talking about you can a lot of times use the bar to make everything mm -hmm. level. Well, that's what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, by doing that, not only are you gonna make sure that everything is level across the top, but you're also centering the face of those uh, pads, the clamping jaws, on the material. Because mm -hmm. remember when I was, uh, we were putting together the cabinet, mm -hmm. and I clamped it down and I was a little off center and you saw that board like yes. tilt in? You don't want that to happen, right? And here, that's more than enough pressure. Mm -hmm. You see the glue squeeze out there. All we have to do now is drive in the screws. Okay. So go ahead and grab those. Now these are different from what we used the other day. The other day we used one and a quarter inch Craig screws, mm -hmm. uh, pocket hole screws. If we used those on half inch material, 
they would go all the way through, mm -hmm. right? So we have to we have to bring down. If you're using half inch material, you need to use uh, one inch long screws. Okay. So we'll go ahead and put those in. You want me to do two of them? Sure. And then just gotta drive them home. Remember, you want to be straight on with it. Come out this way. <laughs> Make sure you're applying pressure from behind the drill. I am though. Okay. Let me see. Let's make, I just want to show you something, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and back this out. So if you want, you can take your hand and kind of do this and you're kind of like pushing them together, right? Because if you let off at all, because this, the screw head design, it's gonna pop out and do that. Okay. So you just want to put the bit in, try to be at the same angle that the screw is, mm -hmm. and then I'm just gonna apply pressure and do that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it takes a little bit of getting used to, but the key is you need to make sure that you have pressure on the bit in the screw head. So I'll actually push from this side. So is that a good angle? I, that is a great angle. And then just push? Mm-hmm. There you go. Perfect. Great. See, difference? Yeah. Yeah. You're a great teacher. I'm a great teacher, thank you. I'm a good student. You are a good student. Best looking student I've ever had. <laughs> All right, so there's some glue in there. This would be your opportunity to go ahead and scrape out any glue. What do you think we're gonna do next? Put the panel in. Back Put in. the panel in. Now, we could glue if we wanted to. Um, well, let's go with that side. That side looks a little bit nicer. We could glue this if we wanted to, but for this, we're not going to. It's very rare that I ever glue the bottom panel because if we do our measurements right, so even though the groove is a little bit too big, it's fine not doing it. Correct, okay. correct. Beautiful. See, look at that. Comes out nice and even. Now we have to put this backer piece on. And what we're gonna do there, that is gonna go in just like this, same way we did the other one. And we still have a little bit of play, mm -hmm. right? So this will go in there. And to be honest with you, in a lot of cases, I won't even glue the back because the back gets zero stress, mm -hmm. right? And again, the screws are gonna be more than enough to hold it in. So what we can do here, if you wanna glue, you can, but um, something to save you just a little bit of time in the long run. All right, we're gonna need that clamp again. You can go ahead and clamp that up. Make sure it's nice and flush. Wait, you did it this yep, way, on right? top. There you go. Yep, yep. Oop. Pretty close. Ooh, nice. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Is that okay? Yep. It's fine. Screws. Now you go ahead and do these ones again just to help you get a better feel for the angle that you need. Perfect. 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 Nice. I feel like I have a harder time going this way for some reason. Now you're right-handed, right? I am. Oh, looks like you did a perfectly fine job to me. <laughs> All right, so our drawer box is pretty much done, but there's one extra thing that we are going to do. Um, and there's a couple of different ways that you could do this. You could, uh, use some narrow crown staples and just kind of go down. And what we're doing is two things. One, we're gonna pull that into it because if I have that gap, that'll actually help take that gap out mm -hmm. um, along with it sitting on top of the drawer slides. Uh, but two, it makes a solid connection of the bottom so it can't slide back mm -hmm. and forth. Right? Makes sense. So I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna toss in a couple of small inch and a quarter screws or so. Just kind of put one here and one here and that'll be more than enough to hold it. So what, looking at this type of screw, what should we use prior to putting them in? The countersink 
countersink bit. That is right. So let's grab one. Like I said, we'll just put one here and roughly here. Um, I'll do one and I'll, I'll let you do everything else. But when you get into half inch plywood, you, you have to be a little bit more careful just because of the, the thickness. So if I go too far over like this, right. you know, it's obviously going to be. So I just come pretty close to the edge, maybe an eighth of an inch or so in. Straight down. And what you'll see, see how it's still a little bit away from the end. You want to do the same thing. So do the same thing here and I'll get the drill ready for you to drive these in. You think that's good? Yes. Perfect. Very, very nice. So for this, we're just gonna screw it down in there so it's nice and uh, even across. There you go, perfect. Boom. Nice. And now we have a drawer box. Uh, I flipped it over for a reason because there might be some people that are wondering, to include yourself, uh, well, what about this exposed edge, mm -hmm. right? Um, one, you'll obviously would go through the sanding por uh, process. You can round over these edges, make it really nice. My personal opinion, I don't, I don't see the need on a drawer box to edge band this because it's Baltic birch. And it has this very nice pattern. I actually like the look of that when I open up the drawer. So if you wanted to, you would have edge banded prior to, which you're about to learn about edge banding because we will edge band the drawer front. Um, but for anybody wondering why we wouldn't edge band, I never edge band Baltic birch drawer boxes. All right, next thing we need to do, it's time to start working on the drawer hardware. These are the undermount drawer slides that we will be using for this cabinet. Okay. Right here, it consists of this drawer slide and this bracket. Now, if we were doing frameless cabinets, this bracket is not needed. If we put spacers on the inside, which I'll show you here in a moment, this is not needed. However, the reason why I had you construct the cabinet box the way that we did is because I planned on using these brackets for this video uh, because these need to screw into that back panel. Mm -hmm. And this will all make sense uh, once we do it. I'll show you how to do that. It's pretty easy. These are the clips for the undermount drawer slides. The front of the slide clips into these. Okay. If you look at the back of these, there's this little notch here. Mm -hmm. Okay. If we would have built the back to be the same as the front, we would have had to cut out a notch mm -hmm. and drill a locating hole for that pin. But since we built the box this way, the only thing we have to do is drill the locating hole, okay. which we will do. It just saves a little bit of time. Okay, so the way that we put these on is the orange clips always face inward. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see it fits into that corner perfectly. They do make a really cool jig though. And that's what we're gonna use. It's very, very simple to do. Uh, it comes with a very small drill bit. Um, this is sold by Rockler. It just helps uh, install this particular type of Matter of fact, you can use this on pretty much any undermount drawer slide because they all pretty much are the same. Okay. Right? Now, if you look here, it says, Undermount drilling guide has an arrow pointing into it. Mm -hmm. That arrow is for that corner, mm -hmm. okay? Then what you do is you see these holes right here? Yes. Those are gonna be for this right here. That's how we're gonna attach it. It's gonna attach to the front. So all we do, we take our drill and the bit, hold it in place. Mm -hmm. And that's it. You wanna go and do the other side? Yeah. All right, now, get that dust out of there, sorry. Uh, these just go down into the corner like this, right? What do you think mm -hmm. we're gonna do next? Put them in. Put them in. So, tiny little screws, right? Mm -hmm. There's your drill. They go in, in this one here and that one there. 
And it, it will be at an angle just like the last ones. Not that much of an angle. Go down, there you go. But how do you know? Like I don't Because you see the cutouts that are here? Let's see how it's recessed there and it's recessed there. That's to allow space for your drill to go in and out. Okay. Good? Mm-hmm. Oh, keep some pressure on it. Let me see. So any, you always have to make sure that you maintain pressure. And one thing that I like about a C-style drill, so this is a C mm -hmm. handle, this is a T handle, mm -hmm. okay? The one thing that's great about the C handle is that it's designed in a way, see how I'm holding it like this, mm -hmm. where I can get my, the pressure pushing into it directly from behind as opposed to this, you're trying to balance it, mm -hmm. right? So that's, that's why these small drills like this are so helpful. Works good. Now, I wanted to show you something uh, that I didn't mention before. I don't know if you had realized. If you take these screws, the bits, the tips are magnetic. So it just helps out with getting everything lined up. Then you don't have to like place them in there and you know, fuss with that, right? Done. Installed. So now I'm gonna show you how we do the locating pin location on the back. All right, so on the other side of this jig, it does two things. It also does the locating hole. So it's, you see how it's got that little ledge right there? Mm -hmm. That's to allow it to sit uh, on the drawer box mm -hmm. or the bottom. So this just slides into the corner, okay? We use the left side hole for the left side of the box. We use the right side hole for the right side of the box. Okay. I'll go ahead and do this side and you can do the other side. See? Mm -hmm. Now we have our locating hole that that pin will accept and I can actually show you really quick. So when this goes up here, mm -hmm. see? Yeah. See how it clipped in yeah. too? That's the great part. My, my, one of my favorite parts about installing these door slides is coming. But that's also a really good opportunity for you at now just to make sure that everything's working the way that it should. So you go ahead and knock out that side. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> sorry. All right, moving on. So we need to install these brackets mm -hmm. first in the back because it's gonna make the process of installing these so much better. Now, this is where things can get a little bit confusing, okay? Because there's a few different ways that you could do this, theoretically, right? Let's go ahead and attach one of these. And if I can get it in there. Okay, I could do this and I could put this here like that and I could try to figure out, make sure it's perfectly in alignment because mm -hmm. if they tilt inward or outward, the drawer will not go in and out. Mm -hmm. So it has to be located in the, in the proper position. You could have a jig that spaces is exactly, you know, away from the wall, all that stuff. This is a much simpler way. What we're gonna do is we are going to take this it's a piece of scrap wood. Mm -hmm. I cut it to be the exact height of the top of this, mm -hmm. okay? Why is that important? Because I'm trying, I need to mark the intersection of this and this, mm -hmm. okay? So I just do a little mark right on the top. Mm -hmm. See that? Yeah. Right, now I know that the edge of this bracket, right, in the back of the cabinet mm -hmm. needs to be 12 millimeters over to the right, okay? This hole intersects our original mark. See that? Mm -hmm. The reason for that is because this sits slightly over to the right on the thing, but by locating it this way, we'll, able, we'll be able to make sure it's in the exact perfect spot. So then all we have to do is install the drawer slide, slide it on and screw it into place. Now, I know it seems confusing, right? Because I just gave you like, oh, it's 12 millimeters over and all that stuff that I can't st like stress to people enough. Like if you want to find out the measurements, you just have to look in the manual. Okay. People rack their brain. They're like, I can't figure out how to do this. Read the manual, test it out first to make sure that it works on scraps. I always say that. Anytime you're unsure of something, test it on scraps first, right? Because if it doesn't work out, now you know and you didn't ruin your project. So we're going to use this. What we're going to do is we're going to put this 
in the back of the cabinet just like that. Mm -hmm. And from here, I would just take my bracket and I would slide it over until the right edge is on that reference line that I made. And then mm -hmm. we're gonna go ahead and, and screw it in. But before we do that, we'll mark the left side too, just so we can do both of them at the same time. So same exact steps. I'm gonna mark this line here and then I'm gonna use that as my reference to figure out how far I need to come over into the corner. So in this scenario, it's almost the same, but it's not exactly the same. And all that is is a slight variation uh, on the face mm -hmm. frame where it was installed. So, pretty easy. Now let me show you the, the simple part. Now the easiest way that I found to go about this, uh, especially on a deep cabinet like this, is to just lay it on its back. So now I have open access to what it is that I need to do. And we're just starting with the right side of the cabinet. We're placing this in like that. And then we can take our bracket and we simply put it in and we slide it over to where it lines up. And now we're just gonna drive a bunch of screws. Now you'll see a bunch of different holes there. Mm -hmm. You by no means need to use all of those. Uh, I will probably put, uh, I'd say five, maybe six in here. Two on the outer corners. It'll say in the manual like what the recommended is in terms of load ratings and all that stuff. But for this, I'm just gonna screw this in. One more in there. And we can remove our spacer. Nice tight fit. Slide it over to the other side and we'll do the same thing with the other bracket. Okay, so something that I like to do. Um, before we can actually let this go, right, because it can keep shifting, mm -hmm. I would go with this corner over here, okay. and then that way it'll hold it in place, and then you can screw in the other screws and it won't make any difference. I know it's weird that I'm standing here, I'm like in the way. Oops. All right. Go ahead and drive in the rest. Now we have the moment of truth. Make sure that they're in the right position. <laughs> So again, the front of the slide is gonna rest right here and we're gonna drill it into that. So we're just lining this up and perfect. Looks good. Exactly where it needs to be. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay, the next thing to do is we need to set the proper spacing for where the slide actually needs to sit uh, on the face frame. Okay. What I mean by that, you can see it on your side from over here. But from the edge of the face frame to the edge of the slide. Okay. Do you know what it is? What the distance is? Three millimeters, roughly an eighth of an inch. So we wanna make sure that it's in that location. And the way we do that is we just use one of these. Is it touching? No needs to come towards me. Yeah. Yeah. Good? All right. So we're in the right location. Next thing, when you're using these slides with a face frame, um, we're gonna use both holes. Mm -hmm. Typically, if this was a frameless cabinet, I would only use the top one, okay. uh, usually. But for face frame application, because it's only pegged in the front and it's only held the weight in the back. Okay. So we're gonna use both holes, okay? The way we're gonna accomplish that is by this. This is a five millimeter self-centering drill bit. And what that means is you see how it's uh, shaped like this on the mm -hmm. tip? You put that in the hole that you're trying to drill, it automatically centers itself in that hole, and then it will only go to the depth setting that it has. Okay. We're using five millimeter because we're gonna be using these five millimeter Euro screws. Uh, they're very common in European cabinetry. Um, they're my favorite type of screw to use and they are what's called posi drive And if you look at that you see how it has the regular mm -hmm. uh, Shape of like a Phillips head, but then it has all those little tick marks in between mm -hmm. That is an extra little groove. There is a specific screwdriver for it Okay, um, and it actually helps a lot with like strip out and tear out and stuff. So um, Great system. That's what we're gonna use Just so you know So I'll do this side mm -hmm. and then I want you to do this side so I'm just gonna place it in, in that first hole, okay? Just like that. And then I'm gonna start my drill. And then I just push in until it stops. Back it out. Do the same thing here. 
See how it sits in there real nice? Yes. That's what you want. It'll automatically do that, right? So it, again, it's, it's a self-centering bit. So you go ahead and do that side. If you want, I can go ahead and hold it. Oh, hold on. See how it's sticking out? Yeah, I was it's, wondering. Yeah, it's okay. just clogged with uh, the chips. Like, what yeah, did I do? That makes more sense. Now all we need to do, since it's already pre-drilled, for this we'll go ahead and just use an actual screwdriver and do it by hand. We're just gonna attach both of these, one on, or two on this side, two on the other side. All right, my f absolute favorite part. <clears throat> is me. Is you, <laughs> of course but it is placing the drawer box after we install the slides because it's just it's so nice. It's so soothing. Hold on. If we did it right. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna give you the honors of this. So I'm gonna push it all the way back. It's almost like peeling off the... It, it is almost exactly <laughs> like that. So all I want you to do is go right here to the middle and give it a nice push until you hear it click. Isn't that great? <laughs> Isn't that great? Make sure it's on both sides. Yep, it's clicked in. See how we got this nice reveal yeah. all the way around, nice and even. Um, yeah, very nice. Now, the real, the real test, let's push it out. All right, go ahead and push it in. Look at that. Beautiful. Wonderful, okay. Last thing to do for the drawer is install the drawer front and whatever hardware we're gonna use. And I, I'm pretty sure that I have some random leftover hardware we can use for this video, but um, yeah. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, one of my favorite things to do, uh, not this way. <laughs> this is not my favorite way to do this. However, uh, I, I actually really do enjoy edge banding. The way I'm gonna show you is the most simple easy, accessible, basic method, and that's using an iron uh, with some edge banding. So it is designed to cover the exposed edge of the material, mm -hmm. right? And it will make it look like, to most people, uh, that it is in fact a solid piece of wood, right? That's the point of it. Um, and to cover those decorative edges. Now, there's lots of different ways that you can do this. Um, the way that we're doing it is with this edge banding, which already has glue on it. The iron is used to activate that glue, warm it up, melt it, and then it's good to go. So, and then we have to go through some trimming and all that, all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna walk you through how we're gonna do this. Um, when I am identifying where I wanna start, I always think about how I'm looking at the piece that I'm edge banding. So this is gonna be a drawer front, mm -hmm. and it is gonna be sitting like this. Mm -hmm. So I'm always gonna be looking at it from the top down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by edge banding the sides, mm -hmm. which I'll do both of the sides, uh, walk you through that process, and then I'll let you do the top and bottom. Um, because what that's gonna allow is after I edge band these, when I put the new one on, it's gonna cover that edge, mm -hmm. right? Makes sense. So visually, you, you don't look at drawers very often from the side, right? So that's how we're determining that. Now what we need to do is we need to break off some pieces mm -hmm. uh, that we can use for this edge banding. So all I'm doing, getting a rough estimate, it can be a little long, just depends on how much you wanna waste or not waste, and the stuff just breaks. Okay. Um, this is very thin, inexpensive edge banding, um, so it's actually more challenging to work with. It's a lot more brittle um, than say something like a one millimeter thick edge banding, two millimeter thick edge banding, but it will work and cut, break those off. I'll let you, uh, when it's time for your turn, to break off the other ones. So we'll just set this off to the side. You can also use something like these flush cut pliers, which we will use uh, to cut it if you don't want that edge, but it's gonna get cut off anyway. Mm -hmm. So let's just start right here. Give ourselves a nice uh, surface to work on. So what we're doing is we're trying to make sure that it's roughly centered. You're gonna have an overhang on both sides. Go ahead and feel that. 
in relation to the board. Mm -hmm. I have about an eighth of an inch or so, maybe not, maybe not quite that much, sixteenth of an inch. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to just use the iron and we're going to place it on here and we're just going to go back and forth or hold it in place and the glue is going to start to melt, okay? So we just want to make sure that we're nice and hot. We're not using steam. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> make sure we're nice and hot. No steam, right? But once I ha hold it in place and I make sure that it's starting to stick, see how the glue is, the glue is a little bit wet? Mm -hmm. You see it? So we're just going to let that seep in a little bit. And now I know you can use an iron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I use an iron pretty regularly. How do you think the shirts turn out this crisp, <laughs> okay? They don't iron themselves. Now here you just want to be careful because it is very hot. Mm -hmm. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to try to get too aggressive with it too fast because we, we want that to start to cool down. There's a couple of different tools that you can use. Fast Cap makes a lot of really good stuff. I bought this stuff years ago. Uh, I used to use it a lot when I was doing uh, iron on edge banding. Um, this stuff works really well with iron on edge banding. It also works very well with their peel and stick edge banding, which is also an option. Mm -hmm. They do have some stuff where you don't need an iron at all. You peel the tape off, you put it on there. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of that personally, but what this can be used for is just to apply pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, these metal wheels, um, it just applies pressure and makes sure everything seats. And then if you go off the edge, you can break it, but that's okay because the next step is going to be using, these are flush cut pliers. So if you look, see mm -hmm. how it's perfectly flush across, mm -hmm. you place that on the material and you get that flush edge against the material and then you cut it and see how it's perfectly flush to the end. Mm -hmm. Do the same thing on this side. So the way I can kind of feel it is I'll rock it back and forth until it sits perfectly flush. And watch your eyes because they do go flying, right? Okay, now we need to trim off the excess and this is where using inexpensive, inexpensive edge banding can be uh, frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, a really good tool to use for that is one of these, also made by FastCap. This is an edge uh, banding trimmer and it trims both sides at the same time. If you look in there, you'll see those little knives. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're gonna use to cut it. And how this works is you start off of it before the knives and you just apply pressure mm -hmm. together and then we're gonna pull back there we go. And you don't need to get super fast. I've actually found that the slower you go, the much cleaner the cut will be. But look at that. Mm -hmm. Look at that edge now. Good job. Looks very different, right? Yes. Now, something that I always do, um, again, this is a part of that kit. They, they sell this in like a full kit, so I just bought the whole thing. Um, this works pretty good, but you see how it's concaved like mm -hmm. that? That's to allow it to just touch the edges. Mm -hmm. So. If you feel these right now, they're very sharp, mm -hmm. or you don't want that. So what you can do is just take this, go back and forth a couple of times, and now feel the edge. Mm -hmm. See how it's a little tiny bit rounded over, okay? Pretty straightforward? Pretty straightforward. All right, let me, I'll do this other end, and then we'll get going on the long ones. Do you enjoy? I do. Like this I enjoy stuff? the learning. I don't know if I would enjoy doing it all the time. Well, that's a good question. So now, now that you've like actually come out here and gone through an entire process of, of building a thing, mm -hmm. um, do you think this is something that you would want to like tackle on your own? Like you doing projects in the house, like doing built-ins and stuff? Or do you think that there's I think it's nice doing, doing it with somebody. I right. don't know if I would enjoy doing it alone. Yeah. Makes but sense. I like seeing it come together. Yeah. Yeah, that's always the best part. My least favorite part usually is... Finishing? The finishing, yeah. Because at that point, you know, you've been working on the project for so long that you just want to be done. You just want to be done and move on to the next thing. It's like you're so close you can taste it. Kind of deal. It's like the last mile of your marathon. Watch out. Oh, that would have pegged you. Last mile of your marathon. Yeah, it's true. 
All right, your turn. Is there a risk of like burning it actually? No. There you go. Look at that. Looks good, huh? Looks great. Okay, now we're gonna install this, and these are great. So these are these brackets. Uh, these are Craig as well. And what they allow is for you to dial in exactly where you want your drawer front and hold it in place in a very easy, efficient way without having to fuss around with a bunch of other clamps or getting things the right spacing. Um, it's really a great design. You just simply slide it over like this, attach it using that thumb screw. Mm -hmm. But here's what's great about it is that you can see over here and over there, mm -hmm. see how it's real close to it and it fits in that slot that we uh, have between the drawer and the side. Mm -hmm. So you can get directly up against the material. It's, it's just a really smart idea. We're just gonna sl slightly lock that down. The front goes down like this. And then we can line up where we want roughly, where we want our drawer, tighten those down just, just a little bit. Yeah, there, just so it holds it in place. Mm -hmm. I think that's good, okay? So now we need to determine our spacing. Mm -hmm. um, this will make more sense when we do the door, but I know what the spacing that I wanna use is. And it's gonna be, I want a three quarter inch reveal at the top. It's gonna give us a three quarter inch reveal in between the drawer and the door, mm -hmm. okay? So you go ahead and loosen your side just a little bit. We obviously need to come down. Come down a little more, it's probably not quite there. All right, tighten that, we'll see how that is. It's a lot easier too when, I, when I'm looking at it dead on, <laughs> which I'm obviously not. All right, so we came too low. Mm -hmm. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lower this, come up just a little bit. I'm gonna slide this over and I gotta come up quite a bit. There we go, there's my three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna lock that in place. I'm gonna check the other side because sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, when you pivot and go back and forth. Okay, so I think we're good. Now the only thing left to look at is what the spacing left to right looks like. And it looks to me, let's see. It's pretty much dead on, I think. I think we're the same on the right, same on the left. Okay, one thing I will say, uh, typically I'll do the door first, um, when I'm, and then do the, the drawer front after. Reason for that is because you can utilize the door to space everything off of, but if you have these, mm -hmm. you don't have to, like you can use that, like put a spacer on the t top of the door. The reason why we didn't in this scenario uh, is because it's much more instructional and we were going to have to flop the the cabinet all over the place and mm -hmm. with a door on it and then having to take it off, it just makes sense to do everything at once. Um, but I think we're good. So now the benefit here, so it's locked down in terms of the height. What's really cool about it is that I can now loosen this and I can loosen this and I can pull it directly against the drawer front. It doesn't change the height of the drawer. And now, it is in place. Mm -hmm. and now it is good for me to drive my screws in from the backside. So we're gonna countersink two holes. Um, I'll go ahead and move the camera. We'll drive in a couple of screws, uh, one inch long screws just to hold this in place. And then we're also gonna be attaching hardware, which will have uh, screws that go through and help secure it, the two together as well. I wanna take a moment to talk about some of the things that you'll get over on my Patreon channel. Over on my Patreon, you'll have the ability to gain access to weekly updates and exclusive behind the scenes content, early ad-free access to the videos that you watch right here, live monthly group calls on Zoom, 
and direct access to me. And as a top tier patron, you'll actually have the opportunity for me to come visit you in your shop for the day. So if you like what you're seeing in these videos or any of my content for that matter, and you're looking for a way to help support the channel and everything that I do, then consider becoming a patron. I'll be sure to leave a link directly to my Patreon in the video description below. Thanks and I hope to see you there. All right, we're back out here again. The only thing that we have left to do is the door. So off camera, uh, we went ahead and edge banded this door since we already uh, went through that process uh, on video. So this process is actually probably the easiest part, um, mainly because <laughs> it is. It's the easiest part because we have very little to do at this point. Um, we made just a very basic flat panel door, um, which before we install it, there's something very uh, particular about this that I wanna show you. It's something that people can do if they were looking to uh, do flat panel doors and drawer fronts and not paint them. So we'll talk about that. Face frame hinges are probably the easiest hinges that you can do because they just attach to the face frame. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is drill your holes into here and then clip them in, install them, put it up on your cabinet and drill them in. It's, it's really easy. You don't have to worry about the separate clips or anything like that. So that's what we're gonna do now. The way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna use this. This is from Craig. This is a hinge boring jig. Um, comes with this bit right here. Um, this piece is actually a cool 3D printed mm -hmm. uh, modification just to give us some dust collection. It works really, really well. Um, but basically, we're just gonna figure out where we wanna place the hinges. Once we figure out where we place the hinges, we can then utilize this in order to apply those hinges, okay? This is gonna drill it out. Now, the size is a 35 millimeter bit. This is a 35 millimeter bit. And that is pretty standard among all um, hinges. Hinges, yeah. All European style hinges, yes. So if we go like this. Smart Europeans. Smart Europeans, right? They do everything the same. See that? Mm -hmm. 35. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, move the camera here in just a minute and we'll start going through this process. Okay. Now, the most important thing about uh, any hinges, for one, it's gonna go like that. The most important thing about any hinge is determining what the tab is, okay? The tab refers to how far from the edge of the door to the edge of this the hole will be, mm -hmm. okay? So typically, uh, five millimeters is a very common tab right? It also depends on, depending on the type of hinge that you're using, what plate you're using that it attaches to, what the height is, what the thickness is. So what we need to know for this is we need to know what the tab is. Mm -hmm. And where do you find that? In the manual. In the manual, right? Uh, or online. Uh, these are Bloom soft close uh, half inch overlay hinges. And the half inch overlay, what that means is that when this is closed, it will be a half inch over the face frame on all the sides, okay? Um, should we, if we change the tab distance, it would also change that, mm -hmm. right? So there's different ways that you can manipulate it. Well, you could go through and mark, you know, three millimeters in and do all that stuff. Or um, you could use this jig that has settings on it. You see this right mm -hmm. here? Three, four, five, six. These are the most common ones that you're gonna find. Again, five is really, really common with most slides, um, or most slides, most hinges. So these just need to be set to three. And all you do is you just turn this right here, and now it sets the tab. And the way that it does that, these plastic pieces back here, mm -hmm. as you turn them, it just offsets it differently. So um, it pushes it in or out, right? So now, when I go to drill that, it is going to be exactly three millimeters. Nice. Okay? So the other thing about this is typically you're gonna get, um, it's common to put it four inches down, 100 millimeters down, uh, the location of the hinge, all right? Um, we could do that. I'm gonna say we're gonna go three just because this is a relatively small door. Um, but the reason I bring that up is because you could actually just use the edge of this mm -hmm. uh, to determine, you know what, let's just do that. We'll just do four, okay? So you just use the edge of this. Now I don't even have to mark anything. Okay. If I was gonna mark something, <clears throat> what I would do is I would mark from the top and I would place a line here 
-hmm. And then there's an indicator line here and here where you could line that up, right? Mm -hmm. um, but this way we won't actually have to uh, sand anything off. Okay, and then from here, all we're gonna do is we're gonna place this in like this. And then this will be uh, clamped down in place. And we will just drill down. And this already has a stop built into it. Mm -hmm. So it goes the correct depth. I believe the depth of these is 13 and a half millimeters in depth, a minimum that it needs to go in order for that to sit flush. Mm -hmm. Okay? So pretty easy, right? Yep. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so I will go ahead and do the top one just to show you the process because this drilling this hole is not the only thing that we're gonna do. Uh, there's a couple other holes that we need to drill. You'll see right there, mm -hmm. okay? If you look at these hinges, mm -hmm. we have uh, the tools on the side that actually hold the hinge in. Um, and what's great about this is when we do that, you're basically self-centering it. So when you go to attach everything, you don't need to use like squares and all mm -hmm. that stuff to keep it good to go. So this, we're gonna go ahead and slide in, twist it, lock it in place, and now, uh, this will cut pretty aggressively, right? Um, we've got it clamped down, it should be fine, but all I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of pressure over here, okay? And again, we're gonna make the cut all the way down to where it stops, Okay. All right? This little dust collection fitting is fantastic. <laughs> It really does a great job. So we take that off, and now we just use this small bit here, and we're gonna pre-drill these holes, just till it goes all the way through. Now we can unclamp this, and you'll see our mm -hmm. hinge is in a perfect location. Awesome. Very simple, right? Yep. Okay, let's go ahead and get this one set up for you. Slide this over. Remember, we're gonna go right off the edge of the material. Mm -hmm. Now, um, while I'm clamping this down, with this, there, it doesn't matter. Like, with face frame hinges, I could have put one at one inch and I could have put one at three inches, mm -hmm. right? There's nothing else that it needs to match up with because we will be attaching these with screws to the face frame. Um, so that is a benefit. They're just much easier to do. Like building a, f a face frame cabinet is probably one of the easier cabinets to build with overlay, uh, overlay doors and drawers. Um, these are probably the easiest hinges that, that you can use. All right, let me go ahead and get this. This can be a little bit tricky just to get turned in there properly. Um, one thing I would like to point out while you're doing it, if it feels like it's not cutting, all you have to do is just rock a little bit left and right and you'll notice that it'll continue to go. Okay. 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 Put set that off to the side there. Good. Now, uh, one thing that you can always check on the first one is to make sure that you actually went deep enough, which we did because mm -hmm. it was already set, right? But sometimes you'll get it and it'll be like that. Mm -hmm. You definitely don't want that. You want it to be flat uh, against it. Okay, so next thing to do is screws. We're actually uh, just going to do these ones by hand. Um, you could absolutely use a drill, and I do if I'm doing a lot of them. However, because we already pre-drilled it, the screws will go in very easily with a regular screwdriver, and it will stop you from over-tightening it. So something to be aware of when you're doing anything that's going to be holding weight and getting stress is that you don't want, if you just have the clutch settings wrong on your drill and you strip it, you now have a hole that is not providing any strength, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we can just do it by hand. And what I like to do is not quite go all the way with the first one. Mm -hmm. um, these, they are self-centering, right? Because they got the little conical shape. Mm -hmm. And then this has a little conical shape as well. So when, as it goes down in there, it's gonna center everything. So if you do the first one and it's just slightly off, it can skew the, 
the uh, hinge. So I'll, then I'll go back and I'll tighten this one down. And we're good. We know it's nice and square. Perfect. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you uh, before when I was saying, you know, let, let's pretend that we wanted this to be the wood color, whatever material we're using, white oak like we like to use, um, like I did with the Kitchen Island. You'll notice that the grain continuously flows up because with a little bit of planning, you can set that up to where it does that, mm -hmm. right? You know you have a door, you know you have a drawer. If you're using the same material for both, account for that and you can cut them out at the same time, which is what I did here. And what you'll notice, mm -hmm is you have that continuous grain, it's the exact same thing, just the pattern going up. So that can be a really nice uh, look if that's what you're going for. So that's why I had it marked on the back. So I could talk about that in this video, but pretty easy to do. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open these hinges up, okay? These hinges have these uh, hooks on them, mm -hmm. right here, see that? Yeah. That's gonna go directly over this. Okay. It always assumes that you're using three quarter inch material, which is pretty standard on a face frame, right? You can do bigger. It would be a different hinge though that you would need. Um, so those kind of grasp and go around it, mm -hmm. okay? Now, what I've done in the past um, is try to like put the spacers, clamp them here, something that it can rest on. I've tried to eyeball it before and then just get the screws close to where it needs to be. Um, and then you can loosen and adjust them, but nine times out of 10, I was just barely off and I need like the slightest bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start and we're gonna get as close as we possibly can right off the bat so we don't have to do that. If we do have to make any adjustments, it's not a big deal. And another thing, uh, a great product from Craig is this. And what this is, we're gonna put the hinge uh, on this side. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it will be opening up this way. This is basically a platform to hold your door so you can mark the hole locations and pre-drill them with little to no effort at all. Okay. Right? And this could not be easier to use. We know what happens when I say that. This yes. could not be easier. And then it just goes haywire, right? Mm -hmm. So we just clamp this down in place to the face frame using their clamp. And now I have this nice and sturdy platform. It also comes with these. What these are is uh, spacers, mm -hmm. okay? Um, they have a, a manual that like actually shows there's different locations here. One, two, three, all the way through eight, I believe. This piece here just slides out and you can adjust it. And it'll tell you if you're using half inch overlay, what settings it needs to be on, Okay. right? And the starting point is actually where I am right there. But when I was testing this out, I realized, okay, we need to, you know, work with that height just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is you can add these spacers here and you can work it to where it's gonna put the door exactly where you want it. Mm -hmm. So what I was trying to achieve, we have roughly a three quarter inch reveal up here at the top. I kind of want close to that here. So we just adjust as necessary. Okay. okay. So pretty easy. So I can sit here with this up against the face frame, just like that. Right there. Mm -hmm. And now all I need to do is mark those hole locations for where I want to do the hinges. Okay. Right. So let me uh, reach in my pouch here. Let's see, we'll go, yeah, let's go that one. Nice dark color. Go ahead and just mark center. dead center of where that is. Okay, we'll go and do the same thing for the bottom. Good? Okay. All right, now what we have to do, we're gonna pre-drill those holes. You don't have to do it, right? But these are some pretty beefy screws that go in there. Okay. Um, so it's always best practice to, to pre-drill these holes because it'll just make actually assembling it so much easier. And then this, you can just take off like that, or we can keep it on there and it'll just, again, help us put in those screws. Okay. What would I want you to do is I just want you to pre-drill these holes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna use this drill bit. You only need to go about yay deep, okay. right? If you go too deep, it doesn't make any difference because the screw's not gonna go that far anyway. But when you're looking at it, just about a quarter inch or so. Okay. Um, and we got our location there, we got our location there. Go ahead and give me that screw. All 
All right, nice. So with this, we're gonna go ahead and use the drill, okay? Mm -hmm. We'll just go ahead and set the clutch settings right about there. Um, what I'll, I'll go ahead and put in this first one. The bottom one? Yeah, I'll do the bottom one. <laughs> <laughs> so again, we have our nice little jig here. All we gotta do is find that hole. Right, and now, go ahead and get this one lined up for the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, now we can go ahead and remove this, because we don't need it anymore because our door is now attached. And now the moment of truth to make sure Everything lines up. And it looks pretty dang good. I don't know if we're gonna make any adjustments at all. Any at all. But we can talk about it real quick. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and come on this side of me over here. Yes. There are some adjustment capabilities using, uh, they use the posi drive screw mm -hmm. tip typically in, in hinges. So you can actually adjust uh, in and out, um, depth of, or left and right, you mm -hmm. know, if you want the door to go left and right on a lot of hinges. And there's two different adjustment screws on this particular hinge, one here, and there's one back here. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to go up and down, it would be as simple as me loosening those screws, and then I could shift this whole thing up or down. Mm -hmm. And since we marked it using that jig dead center, we have about three to four millimeters up and three to four millimeters down. So if we needed to adjust it, we would be adjusting it with those screws. Okay. So looking closer at the door on this side, I actually do have an adjustment that I can show you. So how it does make a difference. See how it's closer down here at the bottom? Mm -hmm. Well, if I want to adjust that, I can pretty easily mm -hmm. just by turning that screw. And now it's a lot more even all the way down, right? But man, it looks, looks great. We have one more thing. We got to put the hardware on. Now, easy part, this is uh, that jig that we used when we did that piece of hardware. Um, and that one we used uh, the two sliding heads, mm -hmm. right? Well, because we're using a very small um, pole, same exact design, just smaller, right? I just think it looks, mm -hmm. you know, pleasing. Um, I've already got this set up based on where you said you think it should go, which is roughly right around here. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a, a good location for it. But because the hole spacing, is so close together on these, you can't use both of these because it's outside of the tolerance. So you'll, well, this time we'll actually use this one that's always permanent in the center and then one of the adjustable ones. So it has that adjustability. And we also get the opportunity to use this stop, which will allow it to rest on top of the cabinet, just like that, mm -hmm. right? So it makes it super simple. Um, one thing I wanna point out, see where my fingers are? Yes. How they're just on the, on the end there? Don't get them anywhere near where that bit could come on the back side. Okay. okay? So don't, you wouldn't want to like put your whole hand out. But that's all you have to do. You just hold it steady in place. We'll drive those screws in and we'll get this thing installed. Okay. See if, uh, that might be the pot. That, that's the Phillips head. That's the one you need. Yep. All right. Go ahead and tighten those down. Let's move all these guy names in here. Philip and Chuck. Philip, Chuck. Where's, yeah. the, where's the female representation? I don't know if there are any tools with female names. It's about time. About time. All right. So you are officially done building your first cabinet ever. So we talked about in the previous video how you said that the box construction and the face frame is a lot easier than you had thought. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about doing the door and the drawer with the addition of the hardware? The door was also similar to building the box, the drawer and the hardware. Confusing? Yes. Yeah. So that's probably the most common uh, thing that I, that I talk to people about, that have questions. They're, they're scared to build a cabinet, right? But I think we've shown in this video series that building the cabinet and the box itself is actually very, very simple, yes. right? Um, it's all about doing it in a process. It's when you get into the hardware, because hey, we have all of these different styles of pulls and what orientation do you put them and 
we have all these different styles of hinges and we have overlay and we have face frame, and we have inset and we have all of these different things. Uh, undermount drawer slides, side mount drawer slides. It can really become confusing. I think that's where people get lost, but there's a lot of good resources out there that, that talk about all those things. So overall, how do you feel with doing this project with me on top of it? It was fun. It was I fun? 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 would recommend. <laughs> Hear that everybody? 10 out of 10. Now, one other question that I have is now that you've seen what goes into making these videos, yes. how do you feel about that? The amount of work that that is? I get now that it takes you a long time to finish a project. All right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, actually. Constant moving in the camera, constant retakes, uh, which we actually did good. We didn't do many retakes. So anyways, I enjoyed that. Me too. That was fun. Now, if you could build 15 more of these uh, and we could get our kitchen remodeled, I'd really appreciate it. Sorry, I got a call really quick. Yeah, I got a call. <laughs> See ya. That was it? <laughs> yeah, that's it. You're done. <laughs> if I fit in the cabinet, <laughs> you could open it. <laughs> you might.